Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now, today's episode, I've been a Bank of America Preferred Rewards customer, the Platinum Honor status for about a year now, give or take. Maybe you've heard me mention it. Um, so we're going to take a look back here, like a full review to see if Platinum Honors or Preferred Rewards as a whole is worth it. We'll cover the products I've used, my, the ups, the downs, the improvements. Come out on the other end and figure out if this is worth considering in your credit card strategy and or maybe even your financial strategy as a whole. So of course, that sounds interesting to you. Go ahead, press the subscribe button and let's get to work. Now, of course, we've done full videos on both Bank of America Preferred Rewards and my strategy to get in. Those will be linked down below for you. Uh, but if you you know, just want a Cliff Notes version, I'll give you a quick update. And then we'll do the chapters tool will be by product that I've used. So checking, savings, uh, the Merrill Lynch, of course, the credit cards. Then we'll kind of do like an overall you know, summary of it all, what it means, improvements, things like that. So uh, most banks like to claim that they're relationship banks. Relationship bank really means give me more of your money and I'll give you better stuff um, in the form of multipliers and pricing, things like that, product pricing. And uh, Bank of America, to their credit, is the only one that I've seen that actually gives you better pricing and multipliers. U.S. Bank has some kind of a loyalty program. I think Citi's trying one as well. Um, but they don't really give you anything. They, they might waive a checking account fee here or there, but that's also because you have so much money with them, which they would have done anyways. It's kind of how checking accounts work. Um, so Bank of America is a legitimate-ish relationship bank, right? And so Preferred Rewards says, again, give me more money. I'll give you more stuff. So there are a few different tiers. There's gold, platinum, platinum honors, and diamond. Um, I am platinum honors, which means you have $100,000 with Bank of America or Merrill Lynch because this you have to have a checking account, and then you're looking at deposit accounts, so checking, savings, CDs, or again, Merrill Lynch investment brokerage, retirement accounts, things like that. This almost only makes sense if you go through Merrill Lynch. And so that's how a little bit how it works. Um, so my first product with them was a checking account. Well, technically it was a business credit card, but that doesn't really count because that was just for a, a promotional offer. So um, the checking account. Um, you have to have a checking account, as we said, to open it. To be in preferred awards, it has to make it stay open. So I got a $100 offer at the time to open the checking account. Um, there's nothing really to write home about the checking account. I mean, it's a standard checking account. Uh, they they will waive the, the maintenance fee for you because you're in preferred rewards. But again, it's a requirement to have the account. Uh, so it's not you know that big of a deal. I'm not going to give them credit for waiving a maintenance fee. Um, the one thing I will say is there were are other fees I wish they would waive. Uh, I needed to get a cashier's check and or send a wire. And so I was like, I'll check there. But I couldn't clearly see that they were going to waive a cashier's check. Um, and the wire still cost money. I think both sending and receiving. If you're diamond, then you got a few free wires uh, each quarter or each month or something like that. I'm not diamond, so I'm um, not helpful. I've seen cashier's checks be waived fees. There's usually eight to 10 bucks be waived in branch, not at Bank of America, but just in bank branches. Like, But that's usually reserved for people who know the banking staff. They're like, sure, whatever, we'll comp you. Check here and there. Banks, you know, in customer service, you generally have like a little bit of discretionary fund just to keep customers happy. Um, but I would I would assume they could have done this at Bank of America, but they did not. So again, not helpful, but it's a checking account, not anything really to write home about. Um, the big thing here, the, the time was mostly spent setting up was the brokerage account. So it's a Roth IRA through Merrill Lynch. I got, I think, 400 bucks for signing up. Um, again, you just have to have that maintain that balance, I think, for three consecutive months. They take the average of that, then it figures out, you know, hey, where do you fl slot into um, preferred rewards? So anyhow, um, opening it up, easy enough. But when you go to open up a new retirement account, again, Roth IRA, you get to fund it a few different ways. And I'm funding it from a rollover from Fidelity, right? So when you leave your job or uh, get kicked out, you can, you know, take that money with you in retirement and you can move it either to your new company's plan or you can move it to, you know, your personal um, retirement account if you want. The individual, I should say. Um, so I'm going through the process with, with Merrill Lynch, and you get in there, and you're like, okay, well, let me um, choose rollover to fund this account. They say, hey, give us a call. I'm like, All right, cool. So I call them, sit on hold for an hour. There's no callback feature. There's no chat. There's no IM. There's no secured message, any of that. So on hold for an hour, the lady who is very nice is like, hey, look, we got to fill out this form. Well, where's the form? It's in some document center that you never would have found. And the system makes no mention of it. They don't just tell you to fill out the form. They just say, call us. Well, fine. Okay. 
Not your fault, but fine. So I fill out the form. You upload it. There's no way to tell Bank of America or Merrill Lynch what you're uploading. You just blindly fire this document off. There's no notes. There's no confirmation they got it. There's no confirmation they're doing anything. And what the form basically said was, give us the information on the Fidelity account and where you want the money to go, and we will take care of it. Which is helpful because normally, uh, which all every time you roll something over, you call the outgoing institution, Fidelity, and I've done this at Vanguard and I think one other place as well, say, hey, look, I'm leaving. And they say, okay, where are you going? Going to Merrill Lynch. Fine. They write a check to Merrill Lynch on your behalf. They mail you, Fidelity mails you the check, in case you've never done this before, and then you then take that check and put it back in the mail, send it to Merrill Lynch. And there's just something, I don't know, unsettling about having that much money at 100 something grand in a check just mailing it and it's a silly process but i assume it's a liability thing you know fidelity is like not we gave it to you you deal with it so if i could avoid that process by having merrill lynch do it by all means but they never did anything with it they never called me they never emailed me they never confirmed they got the document nothing so finally i just did it myself now after that everything was fine and i did get the promotional offer and everything but it was just silly. And then another time I did upload another form for them and they did take action on it, but they never confirmed they got it. Again, it's just, this is a lot, a lot of gaps for the second biggest bank in the country. Um, but okay, fine, whatever, it's open. Um, so moving on, third product, uh, savings account. I got a targeted for a savings account promotional offer. Nothing to do with preferred rewards, just targeted for savings account offer. I said, cool, let me sign up. Um, so I opened the savings account. Again, there's nothing really to write home about, but the thing that jumped out to me is that I needed to fund the savings account for, with 50 grand for like two months. No big deal. And uh, so I, I, my Ally account's already linked. I'm like, let me just pull the funds from Ally to the savings account. Well, guess what? There's a funding limit, a transfer limit on the savings account. And guess how much it is? It's $1,000 per day. So you telling me you deal in millions with platinum on or diamond honors, but I can only transfer a thousand dollars a day. Got it. Enough said. Moving on. Um, credit cards, the one everyone wants to hear about. So I got three credit cards: um, customized cash, Susan G. Komen, and unlimited cash. Those are my three cash back cards. I'll rotate them on screen as we go. But again, with Platinum Honors, the, the two cars customized in Susan G get to five and a quarter percent on the category of your choosing. Unlimited cash is 2.6 back on everything. Pretty good. So it does preferred awards helps in the multiplier standpoint. More on that in a second. Now, Bank of America does have credit card rules where like it's called three and twelve. So if you've had like I think three applications, three new cards in the last 12 months, well, they're going to decline you. Um if you're a customer of theirs, then it moves to like five or seven and 12. Now that doesn't have anything to do with preferred rewards, just are you a customer of theirs? So it does help a little bit and that is a little bit of a relationship coming into play. Now, uh, I did, I think I got the unlimited first, but then you can also be approved for, it's like a two, three, four approval rate. So two cards in, in two months, three and four months and four and 12 months, I think is the rule. Um, so I did apply three weeks later for the customized cash card, got denied, called them because the, most banks have recon line, reconsideration line. They said, no, we don't have a recon line, go away. Okay, fine. Then a few days later in the mail, a letter comes and says, hey, was this your application? Call this number. So I call the number. They're like, oh, yeah, we just wanted to verify it was you. We'll resubmit it. I won't tell you what the answer is, but, you know, you know, maybe you'll, you'll get the card in a week. So I was, I did end up getting approved. So again, that communication disconnect, if I'm calling in and asking and you say no, but at the same time you sent me a letter, I don't know. This is a reoccurring theme. Um, so the credit cards themselves, yeah, I think they're fine. Um, you know, the app isn't terrible for credit card payments and seeing them. You know, we'll cover user interface in a second, but you know, the credit card multipliers are primarily why I did this. And I will say to Bank of America's credit, again, not preferred rewards related, but for the, the choose your own adventure cards, customized cash and Susan G, you can actually change your category mid month, which is mid quarter, which is super helpful. Many of the other category cards, you're locked in for the quarter. So that is a very beneficial. The cards are actually within the card. I say they're easy to use and see what you're earning, things like that. And most things do count as online shopping, which is great because that's primarily how I use the two. Um, so no real complaints there overall, but we will revisit the cards in my overall thoughts section. So those are the products I've used. They do offer many other products, um, but those are just the ones that I've used. I think uh, 
there, there does need to be a user interface chapter here, so we'll do that now. I mean, the user interface is is kind of abysmal, especially online. It's very old and archaic. It's hard to like initially figure out how to like link bank accounts and then transfer stuff. There's been times where I've needed the system to send me an access code and it hasn't um, until like the third or fourth try. Why, I don't know. Um, even like making payments within the it, it's almost easier to just push a payment from like chase or something as a bill pay to bank of america i don't know why but for the longest time i couldn't see all my payment options in the app user interface just really bad that also comes through on merrill lynch um again it's just really old and archaic which is kind of strange to the second biggest bank you know again i don't do a whole lot in it i just make my yearly contribution then redistribute some dividends things like that but user interface also pretty bad so Overall, there you go. Um, now, what's the what's the verdict? Well, I think this breaks into two categories: thoughts on on preferred rewards, and then Bank of America as a whole. Then, is it worth it? Do I regret it? So, thoughts on preferred rewards as a whole is a few things. Number one, I just don't think it's competitive enough anymore. Um, you know, the, the cards are good, but at the same time, you're talking about hundred thousand dollars with Bank of America. To make their cards as become as competitive as like their peers' cards, really like Chase cards. So like you know Chase five percent back on Amazon, five percent back Ink um Ink Cash, Freedom Flex is five percent categories. Door or Instacart is a five x card. Robinhood has a three x card now. Yes, you do to be part of gold their gold tier um, service, but that's only at the time of taping, that's only like 50 bucks a year. Um, so the cards, yes, the multipliers are good, but they just don't go far enough. Um, you know, the card should easily be five and a half or six percent back in the top category because it is capped at twenty five hundred dollars and spend a quarter. Same with the unlimited cash. That should probably be three X back. If you want to cap it, I mean, I get it, but I mean, a hundred grand, I don't think it should be capped when Robin Hood has this card that's uncapped for $50 a year, right? Now that could change, but again, the time of taping, it's a lot of money to make their cards be competitive with the top players. And again, I have more expectations because Bank of America is a top, you know, top two bank. Now, in addition to that, I would also say, yeah, uh, I would throw in the U.S. Bank Custom, U.S. Bank Cash Plus and the City Custom Cash in there as well. Um, so, so there's that. I also think if you want money on deposit, you've got to have a high yield savings account product. Why they don't? Well, I know why they don't, but it, it seems like you know you would do that for but they had they've chosen not to so that's fine i guess and the last thing i would say is the percentages um percentages the math works but people don't talk or read in percentages right is that is kind of the problem so when you say hey it's a 1.5 x card and it's getting a 75 percent boost you know there is too much error for people there's too much room for people to do that math wrong maybe that's a you problem i don't think it is because I, I just you know I think you'd want to, at this level, I think you want to be as friendly as possible. So the way they write things could be clear and they could definitely simplify the program. But those are kind of my thoughts on preferred rewards. Now, again, if you you know want to bank with one place, then like, sure, it's probably fine. Um, you could probably shop around. As we mentioned with the credit cards, you can do pretty well comparable cards um, for a lot less money. I assume it's the same with the banking products. I know their mortgage thing, they'll give you $600 back at closing. Uh, 500, when I worked at Quicken Loans, now Rocket Mortgage, like five, you could get $500 back at closing any day of the week, no matter what the market was. It only went up from $500, right? Um, so that's not that revolutionary. But if you're only ever want to be in one place, well then sure you you know the, the pricing helps. But if I'd imagine if you shopped around those products individually, you would do much better. Not everyone wants to have accounts in every different location though. And that's kind of the trade-off, maximum savings or maximum benefit for a little bit of convenience. Um, but I think really if you, if you know, this is a long video, but like if you go back through it, as I thought about it, my complaints are less with preferred rewards and more with Bank of America as a whole. User interface problems, that, that's going to be there whether you're a million dollar client or a two dollar client. Uh, communication, everyone was very nice. I don't want to like, get anyone in trouble. Everyone I talked to was very nice, but... Again, we had the why wait and hold for an hour? Why can't I have a call back? Why can't like, you know, all this stuff? Why tell me to call if I calling doesn't help? Um, you know, the letter in the mail, not super helpful. Um, 
it just goes on and on. And the savings account transfer limit, $1,000, like that's insane. Like why would it be $1,000? This isn't the savings account was new, but I had been in Bank of America for like a year by the time I opened the savings account. Um, all of that stuff is just problematic and it's always going to be problematic, I, I guess. I don't see them fixing it anytime soon. And that can be a lot to deal with if it's your only bank. I have the benefit of, I've got Chase, Bank of America, U.S. Bank, Citizens, Hunting, you name it, I've opened it. Um, I open 50 accounts a year on the other channel run on the bank. I'm like, this interface is not the worst. PNC is the worst I've seen by far. This is not PNC levels, but it ain't great. And like, that's kind of a problem. So I guess overall, like it's kind of a split. Like, yeah, preferred rewards needs a little bit of a buff and things like that. But Bank of America is just, it's, it's a lot to deal with. Um, but it is doable. Obviously, it's doable because they still are second biggest in the country. So overall, final thoughts. Um, should you, it, This is like a weird thing. It's like, on the whole, would I say you should probably do this for three cards? Because again, they have travel credit cards. But I really, to me, Bank of America is a cash back uh, setup. They've got three cards. I don't know that I necessarily tell you it's worth it, but I'm still glad I did it, which is a weird review. I understand this. And I have no links to sell anyone here, by the way. But... My overall quest is to get 5% back on everything. And so having two extra cars with a little bit of flexibility where I can switch the category is fantastic. Having two cars that cover a wide range of online shopping things is, is fantastic. Having 2.6 catch-all is nice. When it comes time to pay your taxes, 2.6 takes care of all your processing fees. Just about even state, actually. State is sometimes 2.8, I think, but helpful all all very helpful so i'm glad i have these cards and they've become some of my most used credit cards but the way i look at it is well you got to put your retirement money somewhere and so this is the best place i can put it because i don't i'm not actively trading right again as i said i make my yearly contribution i may redirect some dividends things like that but i'm not i mean it's etfs and mutual funds man and for that reason i think it's fine because i got to put it somewhere i only have to deal with their interface a little bit uh, the credit cards are manageable the app is improving but you know it's still not the level of amex chase or city which i think are tops so for me it meets my needs. Now, if you're not going to go, I want a ton of 5X cards, well, then you're going to be fine with the US Bank Cash Plus, a city custom cash, things like that, and not have to make the $100,000 commitment. But if you want to build out a, a 5X back setup and you have this money and you got to put it somewhere and you're not going to be, even, I mean, you could learn to actively trade it and I guess it would be fine. But, you know, I think you get my point. I don't think it's the best idea in the world to do it for this specific reason, but it's also like, well, if you're going this hard with five percent cards, there's not that many other options. So here you go. And so for my use cases, it does work. But because of all the things we said, because I don't think preferred rewards is competitive enough because the user interface is not great. This Bank of America is not mean, but just not the best at communicating. I don't know that I'd fully recommend it to be your only bank. Um, you know, so there's that. So it's kind of like a decide for yourself what you're after. I'm not moving. I'm going to stay there again. I like the credit card. It solves my problem. It's just a very weird thing to like recommend to somebody. You got to be, I'll say this and we can get out of here because we've almost been here for 20 minutes. You just got to be the right person, right? And I don't think the right, the right person is either someone who only literally wants a bank with one bank. Well, then fine. You'll probably spread out across everything. You'll probably do a little bit better on pricing, and it'll t time savings as well as hopping around, things like that, if you don't care at all for searching stuff or you've got to really be on this cashback war path to get it. I didn't see anything special in the products or anything like that to say, hey, no, you should just pivot and do all of Bank of America. So overall, that's my thoughts. I don't even know if came out with an answer. I hope it was helpful in, in you to decide. I think it's worth considering for my hardcore cashbackers out there. Um, you know, I hope Bank of America adds more cards. At one point, they had even more 5X cards uh, that would that would make it super helpful. They, it was like a Wildlife one and like one other one. I mean, the MLB at one point, that would have been fantastic. So I don't know if we'll see that, but I am sticking with it. I'm still glad I did it. Um, you know, and I think last, uh, I keep saying that, but because I deal with so many banks, my tolerance level is also high for terrible user interfaces, right? 
Um, you know, again, 50 accounts a year, you see some things. And so because of that, I think all in, I can deal with it because of the benefits I'm going to get and because of how it helps my cash back setup going forward. But moral of the story is even with a hundred grand, you ain't special. You still going to have to wait on hold just like everyone else. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this. I hope this Bank of America review was helpful. If you liked it, consider uh, dropping me a thumbs up and subscribing to the channels. We're posting content just like this every single week, right back here every Sunday with all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance and of course every single day over on profitablecontent.com that is the channel's blog always linked down below for it we now have the latest news stories we have bank promotions so if you want to get started with preferred rewards we have a checking account bank of america offer and of course we have credit card offers not from bank of america though but if you want something else that doesn't require 100k in capital uh well by all means check that out as well anyways guys that's gonna do it for this one thank you so much for watching i'll talk to you very soon in the next one